All right, uh, welcome to class uh, chapter two. So this is a pre-recorded lecture and I will pre-record lectures for all of the material so you're able to view it at your leisure. Uh, so today's topics will be mitosis and meiosis. Uh, so this is mostly covered in chapter two and then we're also gonna cover a little bit of material from chapter eight, uh, sections 8.1 and 8.2 on chromosome non-disjunction. So by the end of this chapter, you should be able to differentiate between the following terms, uh, genome, DNA molecule, chromosome, homologous chromosome, and sister chromatid. So uh, there's lots of jargon in biology, and so it's important to always understand what is meant by specific terminology. And so these are the terms from this chapter that are really important to make sure you understand. Uh, so definitely for the test, you should be able to distinguish between all of these different terms. Uh, you're going to need to understand the difference between ploidy, haploid, diploid, tetraploid, and number of chromosomes, and then how to determine this information from a karyotype. You need to describe what occurs during the various stages of the cell cycle. Uh, this is not the same as the stages of mitosis and meiosis. Uh, you should be able to sketch the behavior of chromosomes in the various stages of mitosis and meiosis understand why meiosis but not mitosis generates genetic variation, relate the structure and activity of chromosomes and determines how that influences the inheritance of genetic information, and then finally describe how defects in meiosis lead to issues in public health. So just some of the key background for this chapter. So one of the things that you need to understand is DNA. So you should understand DNA, I think, from material that you've covered in probably high school, or if not that, then at least um, your, your intro bio class that you should have taken, which is a prerequisite for this class. And so you should know that DNA carries genetic instructions for the development, function, growth, and reproduction of all known organisms and many viruses. Uh, so DNA is the blueprint. So the, the reason a dog looks like a dog and a cat looks like a cat is because of differences in their DNA. And DNA is organized as a molecule, so we'll get a lot more detail in to the structure of, of DNA in the second part of the class. Uh, but for the first part of the class, you should know that a DNA molecule is composed of two polynucleotide strands that coil around each other to form a double helix. So, you know, you might just draw it something like this. So you have one linear strand and these are polymers, there's polynucleotides, and so the possible subunits are this A, C, G, and T. And so to build this single strand, we had to connect multiple nucleotides together. And these can be really in any order whatsoever. And so the length of a DNA molecule can be small or it can be quite large. So for certain viral genomes, this is on the order of 10 KB. And then in certain other organisms, you can have DNA molecules that are actually a billion base pairs long. And so these DNA molecules can actually be amazingly long if you stretch them all out. Um, in the cell, they're condensed, um, you know, thousands to 100,000 fold. Uh, but, but the linear size of this is actually remarkably large. So it's also a double strand. So this is showing just a single strand of DNA. And there will also be a second strand that is hydrogen bonded. So this is different from a covalent bond. Uh, but the nucleobases hold these together. And each base is complementary to each other. So if there is an A at this position, that means there has to be a T here. And then G, A, 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 G, C, etc. So a DNA molecule refers to both of these strands that coil around each other to form this double helix. 
So make sure you understand kind of the basics of that and you should review that if this still seems confusing, but hopefully this is pretty straightforward. Um, and then the other thing that you should know is that there's two main types of cells. So there's prokaryotic cells and there's eukaryotic cells. And so the prokaryotic cells are bacteria and archaea, and these are primarily haploid. So haploid means that there is a single copy of each chromosome um, within the cell. And so this is because one bacteria replicates into two bacteria and basically the daughter cell has a single parent and this is true for almost all bacteria and archaea and typically dna is organized into a single circular chromosome there's certainly exceptions to that but if you looked within this bacterial cell you would actually see a circular chromosome that contains all of the dna so this would be a single circular dna molecule in contrast, eukaryotic cells, um, and these include protist, uh, fungi, plants, and animals, uh, these are primary diploid. And so diploid means that there's two copies of, of every DNA instruction within the cell. And this is because we have two parents. So your mother and your father each contribute a copy of your genome uh, into your cells. And so, so you have multiple copies of each gene. So if you're diploid, that means that you're, you have two copies of each gene. Um, DNA in these organisms are primarily organized into linear chromosomes. So if you looked within a cell, uh, instead of there being one single circular chromosome, you would see, and this is a double-stranded DNA molecule, multiple linear chromosomes. And so, all of the genes in the bacteria are organized on the single circular chromosome, um, but the genes are split up into multiple linear pieces in eukaryotic cells. And then the other important thing to note is that transmission of genetic material involves two different types of processes, mitosis and meiosis. So mitosis is used to produce two new identical cells. So during development, in the process of a fertilized egg becoming a whole organism, each one of your cells has, has essentially exactly the same complement of DNA. And that's because mitosis is used in order to, to separate the DNA between the two cells. Meiosis is used to produce gametes. So these are sperm and egg that are used for reproduction. And these are, are this process um, is not conservative, so it doesn't lead to identical DNA contents between the different cells. All right, so what are we gonna cover throughout this lecture? We're gonna cover the basics of how DNA is organized in the cell. Um, part two, we're gonna discuss what happens during mitosis and meiosis. And then part three, we'll discuss the health consequences caused by defects uh, that can occur during meiosis.